he didn't offer any of those uh, services that they do that if you want a dry sleep or you want the wet sleep no nothing like that they just specialize on one thing only performance they want to make sure that you will be happy on your block and <laughs> that you will not come back and tell them hey you did something wrong and it didn't held correctly right no nothing like that it's just a matter of you want the 600 or you want the 1200 horse wheel horsepower he said if you are thinking about boosting your motor it's the right thing to do you can't go wrong fortifying the block I'm not sure if the camera could uh, pick up or show you the end of my screwdriver that there's a, a relief a cut on the cylinder walls right at the, right here at the center that relief is for connecting rods so it won't hit that lower part right there in today's episode you have asked how much does it cost to re-sleeve a block it varies there's two different uh, configuration of the sleeve you have the wet sleeve and the dry sleeve depending on the machine shop that's going to do it for you some of them will, they'll just go ahead and tear that thing apart and put on the wet sleeve on there some they will offer a dry sleeve which is just the removal of this liner right here just replacing that it's really it's up to you but you can always call the shop that specializes on re-sleeving and you can get a, a, an estimate on how much it's gonna cost you let me explain the differences between the wet sleeve and the dry sleeve this is like how the machine shop personnel have told me before I went ahead and have him do the job for me uh, on this one remember I'm not re-sleeving this one uh, there's a reason for it <laughs> Uh, like I said before, I'm not power hungry anymore, so I wanna, I'm going to keep this toned down a bit, okay? It's also an experiment for me and for everyone else. See how much can we get out of it. See how much power can we extract. See how, see how long the block will last without re-sleeving it. And if you are new on boosting a motor, this will be a good episode for you. A little bit about information. Something that uh, you could use that way you don't get caught, you know, with your pants down or something. But I have the uh, F23 block. Uh, this is it right here. This is the relief right there. And uh, previous motor, the last G23 turbocharged that was on here. When I received the block with the new sleeving on it. I was putting it all together and yeah, I have noticed that uh, they didn't do this relief right here. I went ahead and removed that material. I cut it off. Why I did that, it's because of the connecting rods. This is supposed to be, it goes on the center, right? And when the crankshaft moves, it has a tendency of rubbing like so and if you are using a aftermarket rods something like this look at the difference between the two massive difference yeah right there and if you ignore it I don't think you want to take the risk of this thing being so wide that it might create a problem when you put it all together. So something for you to think about, it will not hurt anything. It actually will help you by removing that material. But again, it's your decision. What I'm saying here is 
there's a possibility that it might rub on your connecting rods if you are using an aftermarket connecting rods. I think I have enough project here, so uh, uh, as far as like the bearing clearances, I'll do that on some other uh, time, and uh, I'll be just uh, focusing on uh, notching the uh, the skirt. I think I have enough project here for today. There's the marking. It left some material. Yeah, it was grinding. Got it uh, all uh, taped up, and uh, let's see if I can uh, hog that. I don't know if this is uh, a good uh, way of doing this, but we'll see. When you drop up your block, ask them about it if they are going to do the relief. Show them, you know, your block that it has a relief that you are planning of using an aftermarket rod which is wider than OE and then when you do pick it up again yeah just make sure to uh, check those if the machine shop personnel did their work but no biggie you can always do it yourself it's just extra work for you extra expenses if you need to buy some tooling shaving tooling that's all This is how the machine shop personnel have explained to me the difference of using the wet sleeve versus dry sleeve. It has something to do with the water temperature. On a wet sleeve, since all of this material from here to here, all of that will be removed and it will be replaced with a solid iron from here to here. Now, the dry sleeve, it's only this part right here. Nothing's being altered as far as like the constructions of the block, except removing this liner right here. He said, if you think about it, how much that iron sleeve will heat up and it has to be transferred on your water coolant versus the dry sleeve on a dry sleeve nothing's being altered it stays the same in order to remedy what that iron that massive iron sleeve the heat that it's going to be transferring on that water coolant you must have a good radiator make sure you have the size and you have a good radiator fan and also make sure that you do have a way of extracting all that heat out of your engine bay as you can see i don't have any more rubber seal here i have completely removed that so if you have a carbon fiber hood that has a cut that has a relief right here that works best you really need to uh, size up your game put a two or three rows of radiator on there that it can hold a lot of water that it's being cooled in order to cool that big iron or that wet sleeve and that is the difference yeah that is the part where i actually paid attention when he explained about the dry sleeve and the wet sleep. When I went to the machine shop to drop off my uh, F23 block and get it to resleeve, he didn't offer any of their services if I want a dry sleep or a wet sleep. No, nothing like that. Uh, I was there with my block together with one piston and I said, I just want a 3000 piston to wall clearance. And then three months after, when he called me to pick it up, uh, this is during the pandemic, so it took a little while, like three months, to get it back. I saw it like, man.
<laughs> I didn't ask for this. Well, he said, that's the services that we do offer from 600 all the way up capable, he said. I was happy. Yeah, I was like ecstatic, like, man, it's amazing. And that is the difference between the wet sleeve and dry sleeve. And for the cost, uh, of course, it varies. The dry sleeve will be less than the wet sleeve. Of course, it's because of the material that is being used. In my experience, since I have both, I have the wet sleeve and a dry sleeve, it doesn't really matter when it comes down to a coolant temperature. All you really have to really pay attention is the size of the radiator that you are going to use and put on a good fan. This is where I conclude this episode. How much it costs to resleeve your block. And when you do send your parts to a machine shop and pick it up, mention that relief. Make sure that you do inspect those, that they uh, remove those. Otherwise, you're going to end up removing it yourself. Remember the rods, the size. It's considerably wider. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. I'll see you guys back. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.